Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stefan Morgenstern. I'm from Freudenberg Seeding Technologies, and I will tell you how to avoid gear and bearing damage with electrically conductive shaft seals in electric powertrains. We will start with a little bit of theory and background information regarding bearing damages and electromagnetic interferences. I will then describe our solution, the electrically conductive nonwoven, or econ for short, in detail, continuing with our measurement system and testing results. I will close with a conclusion and a brief outlook. To better understand the phenomena of bearing damages and electromagnetic interferences, we need to look at the root cause that lies in the way an electric powertrain works. The electrical energy is stored within a battery, which works with DC voltage. The electric motor, however, requires three-phase alternating current. So we need to come from DC voltage to AC voltage. And this is done by an inverter. We can see two switches per phase of the electric motor, which represent the semiconductors. In the following, we will concentrate on only one phase of the electric motor. During operation, the two switches open and close in an opposite manner. The different durations, the voltage is positive or negative, has the purpose to generate a current profile that is as close to a sinusoidal profile as possible. This is why this is also called sinusoidal commutation. The voltage we see here is further referred to as common mode voltage, and we will take a closer look at that now. The value of the common mode voltage depends on the type of application. It can range from 300 volts for plug-in hybrids up to 800 volts for battery electric vehicles. The switching frequency is with the newest generation of semiconductors between 10 and 20 kilohertz. However, we do see that the common mode voltage is not as ideal as shown before. We see some oscillations that go up in the lower megahertz range. Now, because of the way an electric motor is built, the common mode voltage couples in to the rotating shaft. The resulting shaft voltage is in between 10 and 15% of the common mode voltage, and it still has the same frequencies. Now let us look at the first issue that comes from shaft voltage. Bearing damages caused by electrical discharge machining, or short EDM. The graph we see here is only valid for a perfectly insulated shaft. If we transfer this to a standard electrical power train, the shaft is only normally insulated by the lubricant film inside the bearing. However, there will be operating conditions where the shaft voltage equals the breakdown voltage of that lubricant film, and the shaft voltage will discharge over the bearing. This leads to voltage flashovers with a high energy density, and this again leads to electroerosion and the typical pitting of the bearing's running surface. The damaged bearing surfaces lead to vibrations and oscillations. They are not only evident acoustically, but in an overall reduced lifetime. Ultimately, they could lead to premature failure of the whole drivetrain. Keep in mind that bearing damages are a long-term damage mechanism. Without dedicated measurement, it will only be detected after a long term of testing. And at this point, please allow me a quick excurs. There was the idea to tackle that issue with insulated ceramic bearings. However, this consequently shifted the damage mechanism to the reducer. Excessive damage at the toothed wheels could be observed, caused by voltage flashovers. Coming back, let me introduce you the second challenge that shaft voltage brings with it the electromagnetic interferences. The graph here already shows that the shaft voltage has a broad frequency range. But to make it even more clear, let's transfer it from the time domain to the frequency domain. We can see that the shaft voltage frequency ranges from low kilohertz values to low megahertz values. And caused by their design, the rotating shaft and also the drive shafts are working as perfect antennas and this will lead to the emission of electromagnetic waves. 
If we now look where the frequency range of the AM radio is positioned, we can see that it is inside of the frequency range of the shaft voltage. Without a countermeasure, this would naturally lead to significant disturbance of the AM radio signal, as well as other electric devices of the car could be impacted. Now that we know about the challenges of shaft voltage, let me introduce our solution, which is the most integrated shaft crowning element on the market, the Econ LFS, our electrically conductive non-woven combined with the low friction simmering. And this gives you a couple of unique advantages. First, we are nearly installation space neutral. We only require an additional space of 0.5 millimeter in thickness. Second, if we switch to the installation position, we can see that we are positioned really close to the bearing that we want to protect. Third, it is not to be underestimated that it can be integrated at a late development state. I mentioned before that bearing damages tend to reveal themselves only after a long term of testing. So the integration is possible really close to SOP without the need for an expensive redesign. Last, to shift a little bit away from the ceiling solution, it is also available as a standalone crowning element, the Econ Pure, for dry applications where no seal is needed. Now that we are familiar with the product itself, let us take a look at how we are tackling the different challenges that come from shaft voltage. A little bit of history first. We began in 2015 with our first generation of Econ. Even though there were no specific customer requirements at time, it is still sufficient to prevent bearing damages in this application. Within these six years, no known issues with bearing damages occurred. However, requirements for electrical powertrains are rising in terms of speed, but also in terms of switching frequencies of the inverters. So it was time for a next generation, while our first generation will not be offered anymore. We introduced our Econ, which will go in serial production in the automotive and in the general industry this year. To protect the bearings, the most customers require an impedance below 100 ohm. And this is what we set as our development goal. However, one key point is missing, a solution to prevent electromagnetic interferences. So let me tell you something about the even more optimized version of our product, the Econ Evo. It aims to fulfill requirements of impedances around 1 ohm, and it will make a key contribution to the electromagnetic compatibility of drive trains. Now we think that good product development only comes with equally good testing and validation method. This is why we set up a measurement system specifically designed for shaft running elements. It uses our existing ceiling test rigs and mainly consists out of a bore plate that fits two conductive seals that you can see here in our laboratory. It speeds up to 36,000 RPM and the impedance can be measured up to 100 megahertz. Both conductive seals are measured in a serious connection and dividing the results by two gives you a representative impedance for one econ. And just to be sure, this has been done in the following. However, we do know about some challenges this measurement method holds. We do have three wear points on a very small shaft, with a low thermal mass and a nearly airtight volume between the two seals. The thermal stresses here tend to exceed the ones in the application, and this leads back to that the impedance we measure ends up higher than in the application. This is why we are working on a new measurement method where only one econ can be measured with lower thermal stresses. Once this is done, we want to introduce that as a standard measurement method for shaft grounding in the industry. Now we can take a look at the results we were able to capture with our measurement method. We can see the impedance over time and as a reference, the first generation of Econ, which runs at approximately 10 kilo ohm. Next, the Econ achieves impedances below 50 ohm. 
it fulfills most customer requirements in terms of bearing damages and exceeds our set development goal of 100 ohm. Last, the Econ Evo runs at approximately 1 ohm. It suits perfectly the customer requirements for the prevention of electromagnetic interferences. Now that we know about the long-term testing results, we can try to transfer them to the shaft voltage. To do that, we have to take a look at the border plots of our econs. In the upper graph, you can see the impedance over frequency, and in the lower graph, the phase angle over frequency. If the phase angle is zero degrees, we do have a pure ohmic electrical contact. If it's plus 90 degrees, it's an inductive contact, and if it's minus 90 degrees, it's a capacitive contact. Now we have to remember the shaft voltage without a grounding element, with its typical discharges and oscillations. If we now add an econ into that system, we can see that it is able to prevent the shown discharges. However, the oscillations in the higher frequency ranges still remain. This is where the econ Evo comes in. Replacing the econ with it, we can see that also the oscillations are gone. And this is due to the fact that the econ has a pure ohmic contact in combination with a low impedance over a broad frequency range. Of course, the Econ Evo also prevents discharges over the bearing. The only thing we can see are some small peaks in the shaft voltage that come from the steep voltage increase during switching, but they are also grounded by the Econ solutions. Another important point is friction. Within the test series, the friction power at various speeds was defined. As a reference, the black line shows the low friction simmering without an econ. Adding the econ, we can see only a slight increase in friction as well as when the econ evo is added. This is due that higher contact forces and therefore higher friction is needed for the lower impedance. Generally, an increase in friction is not desired. But if we take a closer look at a speed that is equivalent to 60 kilometers per hour, we only can see an increase of 8 watts. And if we now consider the overall efficiency of an electric powertrain, as well as the potential damage of bearings by unchecked discharges, the benefits of the econ do clearly prevail. But let's say you are in a position where you further need to reduce friction. The econ can be offered with our low emission ceiling solutions. One example is the econ Levitex. The Levitex is a gas lubricated mechanical face seal. It was introduced for combustion engines at the Vienna Motor Symposium in 2014. And meanwhile, we are in serial production. For electric powertrains, the Levitex meets the highest requirements of our customers in terms of speed and pressure, as well as a combination of both. As it is for the Econ Levitex, first functional samples were provided to the customers. In addition, the Econ is also available in combination with our energy saving seal ESS. And summing all this up, our Econ and Econ Evo can be combined with various sealing solutions. And this brings me to my conclusion. The Econ protects bearings reliably from harmful voltage discharges. The Econ Evo, in addition, prevents the emission of electromagnetic waves and thus contributing to the electromagnetic compatibility of the whole powertrain. The econ sealing solutions are nearly installation space neutral, with only requiring 0.5 mm of additional thickness. They are available with various sealing solutions as well as a standalone grounding element. And in addition, they are highly efficient in terms of friction. The econ solutions can be integrated at a late development state without the need for an expensive redesign close to SOP. But as well as your development of electrical powertrains is ongoing, so is ours for shaft grounding elements. The desire of even more efficient powertrains leads to new cooling concepts, and as a result, there could be the need for a crowning element that is still functional under the influence of lubricants. 
This is a challenge we have already taken with us and we are working to offer you such a solution. Let me end with saying thank you for your attention and let me give you the advice to keep the topic of shaft grounding in mind. Try to consider it in an early design phase of your powertrain. I also mentioned that we are providing the econ to customers of the general industry. They will use it in motors that are powering production lines for the automotive industry. We are looking forward to all your questions and comments. We will be happy to answer them and would like to go into a deeper discussion.